$2,000 for Mr. Vermeer's splendid Morgan dollars. Any advance, 270. Can I have 280? 275, do I hear 280? 280. 280. 280 is the bid. Stop the auction, please. We have a few questions to ask Mr. Vermeer. Yes, what can I do for you? We understand you're in possession of some stolen coins. Well, that's absurd. It's a ridiculous idea. Does the name Whitney McCall mean anything to you? Yes, he's uh, an American who owns some television stations and a few newspapers. Those coins were reported stolen from his private collection. Oh, that's absurd. These particular dollars have been in my possession for oh, almost 20 years. I don't think so. No? We were informed that you bought one of those coins only yesterday aboard this ship. Well, Mr. Vermeer? McCall's coins? Of course not. Then I'm sure you won't mind coming with us just to make certain of that. Mind? Why should I mind? I'll get my case. No. <laughs> you clumsy fool! My coins! Mr. Vermeer, I'm placing you under arrest. But didn't you see what happened? My coins, they've fallen overboard. My dollars. Please come with us, Mr. Vermeer. You clumsy fool. Those were the Chelmsford Morgans. They've been in my family for, for decades. They're going to lump them overboard. Oh, why did you say that? They're because he knew they, they could be identified. Do something. Yeah, do something. Dollars lost. Do something, man. Deliberately oh, them overboard. I'm going to need a report from you, a complete report from my insurance company. Wherever Daniel Bishop is, he's not on this ship. Who did you check with? The purser. I played the jilted lover. Then our contacts at the ticket office and passport control. That's it. You see, anybody who's going to sail has to be on the boat two hours before departure. And he's not here. And so Mr. Bishop is not making the return trip. What do you think that means? Well, it's obvious what that means. He's the one who tipped off the police about me. I can't let him get away with that. Daniel Bishop is not in the trucking business. There is no Daniel Bishop in the trucking business. Then what is he? Who is he? We don't even know that Bishop is his real name. How will we find him? Oh, we'll find him. I'm sure he's the one that informed the police about the coins. I'll find him. You're going to buy the coin. Do you think he knew it was stolen? All I know is, is that he made me look foolish. And I am not in the habit of being made to look foolish. It sets a very bad precedent. And if I know you at all... Wherever he goes in this world, my people will be waiting for him. It's only a question of time. And then Mr. Bishop will answer to me about this coin business. Well? He's been waiting to see you. He just got in from Rome. He wants to apologize. I, I really wish you would accept it. It's a bit late in the day for that. Tell him to come in here and send for Miss Andre. Mr. Vermeer. Do as I tell you. You can send Carlo in now and send for Miss Andre. Mr. Vermeer, he's only human. When I want your advice, I'll ask for it. I'll never get to your scenic collection now. There are other paintings. Not like those. When the imbecile triggered the alarm, now the family has taken the paintings down off the walls and put them in a bank vault. Among them, a favorite of mine, Adal Sarto, Madonna and Child. Signore Vermeer. Ah, Carlo. Come in. Sit down. You're looking well, considering. Signore Verme, excuse me. Il Palazzo Orsini è molto difficile. Apparently for you it was. È impossibile. Where there's a will, there's a way, Carlo. But non è vero. Non è vero conosco che le desidiera il quadri. No, that's putting it mildly. I had my heart set on that Madonna. You called Mr. Verme? Yes, Miss Andre. I'd like you to meet Carlo Cavara. Signor Cavara has served our enterprise well over the years. Now I'd like to reward him. And you. I see. So pleased to make your acquaintance. Oh, see, anche io. Yeah! Ah! 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 Mr. Vermeer, 
Thank you, Miss Andre. You're welcome. Michelle, take him with you. By the way, while you were on the cruise, did Foster get in touch with you? Who? Foster. He said he had a coin that you were interested in. He was going to meet you on the ship and discuss it with you. I don't know anyone named Foster. Well, he came here right after you left. Tucker, Foster. I don't know him. I told him where you were. He said he needed to contact you. Well, he didn't. What did he look like? Did he have a beard? No, he was clean-shaven. A black man. Did he say anything about a Daniel Bishop? Who? A Daniel Bishop contacted me on board the ship. He showed great interest in two coins that I was going to sell at the auction. And he cost me a quarter of a million dollars. How? It doesn't matter, but I'm going to find Mr. Bishop. And I'm going to make him pay. He's going to wish that he'd never been born. What is it? I just talked to Mallory. They've traced two Daniel Bishops in Chicago. One is a teacher. He teaches Latin at the Briggs Academy. He's 53. And what about the other? He's an accountant. He's doing time in Joliet for embezzlement. Mallory has checked with all the trucking companies incorporated throughout Illinois, Indiana, and Missouri. And has found no businesses owned by Mr. Daniel Bishop. That's right. He's also contacted major coin collectors throughout the country, and none of them have heard of him. The man on the ship was an imposter. Well, the only question is now, who is he? Perhaps he's an ordinary thief who didn't know who you were. Perhaps. Look. It arrived from Venice this morning. 15th century. A rigi, a work of genius. It completes the set. It's beautiful. Yes. We'll go back to the museum one of these days, but it's places with me now, now that I have the others. Yes? Well, that's very disappointing, Gustav. What is it? Gustav has been following Mr. Bishop ever since the ship docked in Bermuda. Now he tells me he's lost him. And that's stupid. It's very, very stupid. Lavelle is checking the hotels in Hamilton. There were three men stationed at the airport. Two airplanes took off yesterday, private planes. McGinnis is checking out the registration. I'll run them through the computer and find out who they belong he to. He wasn't a thief. He knew all about me. He knew about the coins. Could he have traced you through Lonnie James? I donated $200,000 to the Asian Museum last year and an equal amount to the Philharmonic Society. You might even say that I subsidized their entire woodwind section. I am a model citizen. Don't you agree? I am respected. Very respected, sir. It's vital that I am respected. I should never have bought those coins from Lonnie James. And Bishop could be an undercover agent, FBI, CIA, or even Interpol. So he failed. He has no evidence against you. He knew about the coins. He could know lots of other things. He could be reporting to his superiors right now. Well, what can he tell them? He could tell them about the coins. Tell them I had stolen property. He could tell me about my, them about my meetings on the ship. If he followed me, he could have seen my meetings with the Peruvians. He could have taped or photographed the whole thing secretly. He could even have witnessed the exchange. Oh, he knows a great deal that could destroy us. I cannot let him live. And I do not know where to find him. You said there was a woman with him on the ship. Yes, a blonde, an American. Maybe the ship's computer can give us her name. Do we still have the access code to the ship's computer? Yes. Just a moment. You have a guest who wishes to see you, a Mr. Daniel Bishop. Doorstep. Yes, well, apparently Mr. Bishop has something on his mind. After feeding you to the police in Bermuda, you think he wouldn't show his face around here. Well, he is somewhat of an enigma, not to mention an imposter. And perhaps now I can find out what his motives are. Without his knowing. Precisely. <laughs> he becomes rather like that American fowl. Fowl? The sitting duck. 
Well, don't just stand there. We mustn't keep our guest waiting. Yes, send in Mr. Bishop. Serendipity. <laughs> Pure serendipity. What's that? The chance finding of a valuable asset. And in this case, more valuable dead than alive. Mr. Vermeer? Ah, oh, Mr. Bishop. How good to see you again. I, I Very. All right, thank you. Then a poor Mr. Bishop, a glass of the Amontillado. Mm -hmm. Thank <coughs> you, sir. The same. I think you're going to appreciate this, Mr. Bishop. It combines a certain smoothness with a edge of impertinence. Well, I'm not that big a connoisseur, actually. Thank you. Too private enterprise, Mr. Bishop. What do you think? It's precisely 100 years old. To be honest, I didn't come here to discuss sherry, Mr. Vermeer. Oh, then perhaps you'd tell me why you are here. The coins, Mr. Vermeer. Ah, but I'm afraid the coins you fancied fell overboard. Yes, quite a little accident there, wasn't it? Quite. Terribly uh, slippery deck. Treacherous. Quite a loss. Tragic. Only it wasn't an accident. You threw them overboard. Did I? <laughs> and why would I do that? Because, Mr. Vermeer, the coins were stolen. Six French Impressionist paintings going at Christie's in London. Get the make or break price. Yes, sir. And two Shakespeare folio editions. Make sure I get them. At what price, sir? I understand, sir. Will there be anything else? Not at the moment. I mustn't keep my guest waiting. I oh. fear I'm being rude. No, 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 no. I understand. I know all about you, Mr. Vermeer. <laughs> and what exactly do you think you know? Well, you have your own little empire. Empire? You flatter me. Underworld empire. Stolen paintings, stamps, first editions, rare coins. And how did you acquire your information? Oh, and I know about your associates, too. Associates? Henchmen. You have a little problem, you just make a phone call and the uh, problem disappears, right? Foolish. What's foolish? You are. Well, you know how I dispose of my adversaries, Mr. Bishop, and yet you walk in here. That's foolish. Very, very foolish. Mais il faut, il faut liquider ce gentilhomme. Oui, absolument. Tu comprends? Bon, au revoir. My apologies. Sounds like you should send your apologies to that gentilhomme. Sounds like he's not going to be around for too long. Well, you understand French, Mr. Bishop, but of course, a man of your stature. However, we were discussing your foolishness, were we not? You were. Exactly. I'm afraid you're... Your knowledge poses a threat to the well-being of my interests, and I have a very low tolerance for threats. Well, don't you think you should ask yourself why I'm here? You don't even know who I am. All right, who are you? Board the ship. I was a trucking magnate. But I'm no more what I seem than you are. Well, 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 the suspense is mounting. You're not Daniel Bishop. You have no trucking empire. No, I have something quite different. Which brings me to the purpose of my visit. I have something for you. For me? A proposition, Mr. Vermeer. And you'd be a fool to turn it down. What proposition do you have in mind, Mr. Bishop? Or whoever you are? First, read this. Then I'll explain. There was a surprise in the festivities at the Junior League Ball last night. Several guests of the New York townhouse of Mrs. Taylor Richmond found they were lacking most of their valuable possessions by the end of the evening. Police are mystified as to how the burglar bypassed the guarded entryway and the sophisticated alarm system, mingled with the guests and made off with an estimated two million dollars in jewels. <clears throat> January the 15th, yes, I'm... Familiar with that party. In fact, I know Taylor Richmond. What's your point? I was the burglar. You? 
That's right. Excuse me, Mr. Vermeer, may I speak?